Good morning, it's May 10, and this is Dublin Community Church Online. Before our service this morning, we want to say to you and have you welcome our new office administrator, Laura Zuber. She handles the phone and the mail and a thousand other tasks there at church. I know that you'll meet her soon. But as for now, it's time for worship. Dublin Community Church, United Church of Christ, online. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. On this day when we honor and remember all those women who have nurtured us in our lives, we also honor all women, whether they are mothers, grandmothers, doctors, nurses, teachers, social workers, all those who give of themselves to nurture and guide others. We honor you today. A call to worship from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily, be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. The Epistle lesson from 1 Peter is a bit of a pep talk. The people are reminded of their identity as God's own people who have been called out of the darkness and into the light. Reading from 1 Peter 2, 2 through 5 and 9. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Our passage from Acts is a story of early Christian persecution, the stoning of Stephen, is the first recorded martyr of the Christian faith. And like Jesus, as Stephen lay dying, he asks for forgiveness for those responsible. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down, and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Our gospel passage from John is a portion of Jesus' farewell discourse, where he's preparing the disciples for a time when he is no longer physically with them. Reading from the Gospel of John, John 14, 1 to 7, and 12 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. 
Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also from now on. You do know him and have seen him. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. These words are in the Bible, and these words can be trusted. Amen. In our gospel passage for today from John, Jesus speaks some very familiar words. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus speaks these words in response to a very direct question from Thomas. Thomas asks Jesus, how can we know the way? I think that's a question people continue to ask, especially in these very uncertain and unprecedented times. How can we know the way? Several images immediately pop to mind for me when I hear the words, the way. Some of you may recall a Christian movement back in the 1970s called The Way. Out of curiosity, I did a bit bit of research into it, and to my complete surprise, It was actually started by a minister in my hometown of Lima. It began as a radio program, progressed to a broader movement, and eventually became worldwide. Although it never became mainstream, it still exists today, with its headquarters remaining in New Knoxville, Ohio. Another image that pops to mind when I hear the words, The Way, is the movie by that same title that came out about 10 years ago, starring Martin Sheen. The movie's about the Camino de Santiago, a network of routes through France and northern Spain which pilgrims from all over the world come to hike. Walking the Camino de Santiago, which translated means the Way of St. James, is a spiritual journey which culminates at the shrine of the Apostle St. James in northern Spain. There are probably as many different reasons for walking the way as there are people who walk it. But my guess is that at the root of the journey is a hunger to connect with the sacred. I know there have been a few people from Dublin Community Church who have walked portions of the Camino, and they described it as a very meaningful and spiritual experience. So my point in all this is to say that I think as a people, we continue to ask the same question Thomas posed to Jesus over 2,000 years ago. How can we know the way? The concept of the way is obviously deeply rooted in the entire biblical story. The ancient Israelites sought the way when they were wandering the wilderness in search of the promised land. In the Gospels, There is Jesus' journey from Galilee to Jerusalem, in which he paves a way for the disciples to follow. And in the book of Acts, there are multiple references to the early Christian movement, which is referred to as the way. So back to Thomas's question of Jesus. 
How can we know the way? Jesus' answer to Thomas is actually pretty straightforward. Jesus says to Thomas and the other disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then Jesus explains further, saying, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. In other words, if we want to know about God, for Christians, God is revealed to us through Jesus. For those in other religions, that revelation may take place in other ways, but it is still the same God. For Christians, when Jesus says, I am the way, he is talking about a way of life. He is using himself as an example of how we should live. It's so basic, and yet it can often be so very difficult to follow. Love your neighbor. Share what you have. Offer forgiveness. Welcome the stranger. The way is a way of love, compassion, and mercy. My wish for all of us is that our days may be filled with love, compassion, and mercy as we continue on our way, now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, from whom every good prayer comes and who pours out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication, deliver us when we draw nigh to you. Deliver us from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ. Hear us as we offer prayers of thanks for those on the front lines of this important work with the pandemic, those in medicine, those who lead us and give us wise counsel through our politicians, through those who are part of delivering food and protecting us, for those who are a part of the finances that undergird all that is important in a modern life. Creator God, watch over those near and far, for those who are fearful of the situation, and for those who have hopes for the future. Come near to us. Hear us now. Hear our silent prayers. Hear us now as we offer to you the prayer taught to us by your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
A final blessing. The grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all our tomorrows. Amen.